Hey everybody, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Nikon Z8 and we're going to be talking about specifically overheating in video recording. So originally I wasn't going to make this video because in my time with the Z8 I've not had any reason to raise any concerns about overheating. I have shot a lot of video on that in high resolution. A lot of that video has been used for other things but a lot of video has been shot on Z8 and I've used it an awful amount. I've never been in a situation where I've gone, oh, the camera stopped me from overheating or I've ran into any issues when it comes to overheating. And that is in, in hot locations and also in cold climates where I've been able to take this camera to over the past few months. But I did start to see that there were a couple of people that had concerns about overheating and the ability to shoot long form video when it comes to the Z8. So I just wanted to make sure that I did my own testing to show you what was possible and what isn't possible. Now, as I'm sure you'll appreciate when it comes to overheating and testing for overheating, it takes up an awful lot of time. You have to long form record, you have to wait for the camera to actually overheat, then you have to wait for the camera to cool down, then you have to film the back of the camera, then you have to edit that, and there's just a lot that goes into making this style of video. So what I've done is I decided to call in some help. And that help was the form of a collaboration with Matt Irwin. All of you will generally know who Matt Irwin is. We both talk an awful lot about Nikon cameras, so if you subscribe to my channel, you probably know who Matt already is anyway. But we decided to do a bit of work together when it comes to testing overheating for the Z8 to make sure that we get it right and to make sure that we're not covering the same bases because, you know, we both don't want to waste our time. So I am specifically in this video going to be looking at the very high frame rates and very high quality video, so raw files and also N-Log 8K 60 frames per second. Matt has a mixture of resolutions and frame rate, and the other important difference between us is, is power. So I'm going to be looking at specifically all of my tests are based around the camera being powered via the battery unit, whereas Matt's tests are all based around the camera being powered by an external power source. So really important point there between the two. The, the idea was that we can then get all bases covered, it doesn't take us as much time, and it means that you then get another person's opinion, and also another working environment, and another idea about what the camera is capable of and what it is not capable of. I will put a link to Matt's video in the description below to make sure that you go and check that out. If my tests work for you and show you what you want to know about the Z8, great. If my tests don't, then I would recommend you go and check out Matt Irwin's tests. Proper heat test to figure out if the camera is going to overheat or not, making sure that the variables are checked, making sure that it's done correctly. So just a little bit about my test parameters and just to give you an idea of, of how my tests are going to work. Every single test that I'm about to show you would have been taken in a room with a consistent temperature between 20.9 and 21.1 degrees Celsius. I work in degrees C, I'm not quite sure what that is in Fahrenheit, but I'll put it on the screen somewhere here. All of my tests are conducted with this Z8 body. You can see that I've got two here. This is a full production Z8 body. It would have all been conducted with this bracket attached in the exact same position that it's being held in here. So there's a bit of gap here, but obviously the bracket is still attached at the bottom. In all of my tests, the card door and the battery door will remain closed. The screen will be flipped out, but this isn't something that I've done specifically. This is to make it easier for me to record the back of the screen. But just so you know, the screen is flipped out all of the ports on the side of the camera will be closed. So the only thing really that's open is the rear screen being flipped out away from the body. Everything else is closed as is, it's a sealed unit. Because I'm dealing with battery power, there's no need for me to have any of the ports open on the side, but in Matt's videos, I'd imagine that because he's dealing with power from an external source, he's obviously gonna have one of the USB-C ports open to allow that USB-C cable in. The real most important thing when it comes to any overheating tests, memory cards. CF Express memory cards will run at different temperatures. This is a common knowledge. You cannot just assume that every CF Express card will run at the same temperature. They don't. The temperature of the memory card will obviously greatly affect the ability for a camera to record for longer periods of time. And to show you this, my first two tests will show you what I deem to be a very cold running card and what I deem to be a very hot running card from my own testing and from my own experience. And the time difference between those is massive. So please don't just disregard the memory card used in any overheating tests. It's incredibly important to note what card has been used 
and the running temperature of that card because it does make a huge difference as to how long your camera can record for. It's also worth mentioning that because I'm using memory cards that are not of a high enough capacity for me able to be recording in one long go, you will see that I'll need to have format stops where the memory card becomes full. I then go and quickly format the memory card and then start recording again. Don't think it's going to affect the overall time that much, but just be aware you'll see that happening in the videos as well. That I just need to format the memory card every time that that memory card becomes full. This will vary depending on the size of the card that I'm shooting with. There are lots of really good resources online when it comes to figuring out how hot a card will run. A particular favorite of mine is a website that I'll put a link to below that did a temperature test on a lot of Compact Flash Express cards. This was a couple of years ago now. I'd love to see a new version of that or maybe I would do some of my own testing of a new version of that. The final message really around cards is that they are just not all the same. It's really important to know what memory card is being used because that will directly affect how long your camera can rec record for and I can't stress that enough. Let's jump into some of these tests to give you an idea of how long you can record for when it comes to the Nikon Z8 and being powered by its own internal battery. For this test, I'm using one of the Lexar CF Express cards, and this is a memory card that is known to run very hot, and this is a good example of showing you the difference between a card that runs hot and a card that runs cold, and how that might affect your recording time. Obviously, being a slightly smaller capacity card, I also need to format this card a lot more, so just something to be aware of. We get the first hot card warning within the first eight minutes and note that this is the hot card warning before the camera's hot and then we get the camera temperature warning within the first nine minutes we then get the camera temperature increasing from yellow to red And then we get the first shutdown within 21 minutes and 49 seconds. I then turn the camera off, start it up. There's no wait or delay here. I just turn the camera back on, format the card, and then ask it to record again. I do open the card door because the camera just refused to turn straight back on and it then records for an extra few more minutes and then ask the camera to record again and it then shuts down after another extra two minutes giving you a total time of 24 minutes So in this test, we're going to be using a Delkin Black CF Express card, which is a 512 gigabyte card. And this is a card that I know runs colder. And as I mentioned earlier, the temperature of the card can make a real huge difference here. So we're running this in 8.3K, 60 frames a second, N raw, N log, and we're running through that card. As I mentioned earlier, we also need to be formatting that card every 11 minutes or so, just because I don't have a big enough storage capacity. And in the first 20 minutes, we then get to the first kind of temperature warning. And it's interesting that the first warning that we get is actually a camera temperature warning, not a card temperature warning, followed closely by now a hot card warning. We then do the second format. At this stage, the camera temperature is now turned from yellow to red, indicating that the camera is getting even warmer. And then around 34 minutes, 35 minutes is where we get that first shutdown, that first temperature related shutdown. Now, without letting the camera cool, what I've done here is I turned the camera off, turned it back on, formatted the card, and then asked it to record straight away. So there's not any time period between here, there's not a 10 minute gap or anything like that. Format the card, ask the camera to start recording straight away, and then it goes on to record for another few more minutes.
And then finally, at 37 minutes and 59 seconds in total, we get that final shutdown. And I end the test there. So I then decided to test the AngelBird SE. This is a CF Express type card that was relaunched around the time of the Z9, um, 512 gigabyte, and they do do faster cards than this, but it's more than fast enough for video, even just shooting 8K in NRAW. And it had similar performance to the Delkin Black. It, it's neither here nor there, really. I mean, it could just be that it's the differences between them would be like sample variation. But they recorded for the same total length of time and also got similar heat warnings around the same time as well, and then also got a complete shutdown at the same time. In this test, I'm recording at 8K at 30 frames a second at 10-bit and in N-Log. So this is more of a much more just generic everyday recording. Um, I am using the Delkin black card here and the camera effectively records until it runs out of battery. So I do not get an overheat warning or an overheat shutdown in 10-bit, 8K, 30 frames a second, and applying an N-Log profile. It records for just over one hour and 21 minutes, and it would go on to continue recording even longer if I was using an external power source. It's the battery that dies. It's not any problems in terms of the memory cards or so on. Now, for this final test, this is where it gets really interesting. So every test that you've seen so far has been conducted with the standard high temperature warning limit. When it comes to this test, I've changed the high temperature limit and the temperature cutout to high. And we now record in 8.3K at 60 frames a second in NRAW, NLOG, and I'm recording to a Delkin black card, the 512 gigabyte version, and the camera does not shut down. It recorded and recorded and recorded and kept going and going and going. And the limiting factor was battery life. If I was testing this camera with external power, it would have, I'd imagine it would have just kept on going. Um, the only limiting factor for me in this example was battery life. The final time at shutdown when the battery died was one hour, five minutes and 52 seconds. That is one hour, five minutes and 52 seconds of 8.3K, 60 frames per second, NRAW, NLOG to one card internally, one battery, and it's the battery that died. That was the limiting factor. As I mentioned, I think it could have kept going if it was externally powered. I'm not using any external ports, the card doors closed, and the only thing that I changed there was the correct use of memory cards and also the temperature cutoff option in the Z8 camera menu. Okay, so some of those tests at the end there, you can see that it wasn't the temperature that was the problem, it was the battery life that was an issue. Now, I'm very careful in the fact that I'm not effectively calling this like a, a full battery life test, Although it would be a good representation of how long the battery is going to last, you would have noticed that I'm not using things like autofocus. And obviously, if you are continuously using autofocus, it's going to drain your battery even faster. So realistically for me, yes, this might be an indication of how long the battery would last, but I wouldn't really want to call it an official battery life test. If I was going to do a, an official battery life test, I would have used autofocus on a moving subject. That wasn't the point of this video. The point of this video was just to make sure that you are all aware what the ability is of the Z8 when it comes to overheating and recording long form video content. So I hope the examples that I've shown you and the discussion that we've had here has been useful. If you have any questions about my testing, if there's any questions that you are unsure about, please do put them in the comments below. Please do go and check out Matt Owen's version as well of overheating testing because he would have used different memory cards, different power sources. He's in a completely different part of the world to me. So please do go check that out. And as I say, I'll put a link in the description below. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Goodbye.